In light of the past 72 hours, I want to say a few words about what I have observed over the last, say, six or so years with regards to Western politics. One thing that I've noticed that the media is particularly adept at, or maybe not even the media, maybe maybe more so the globalization of telecommunication that's done this, but because the news is so excessive and exhaustive, which coincidentally has done a great number of people's attention spans, it seems to be particularly proficient at riling the populace emotionally, but not quite enough to rile them into any real tangible action, just enough to get them invested in the grand scheme of things, just enough to get them to detest the other side without ever realizing the side they support once in power does business with the side they detest to screw over everyone outside of the power apparatus. Because here's a dirty little secret. It's not about left versus right, not even Democratic versus Republican. This is about globalist authoritarianism versus nationalist libertarian. Those are the two sides involved here. And everyone knows Biden is not the guy running the gig. Dementia man, he's just the fall guy. He has no idea what the hell is going on. So when the White House comes out and says, the steward of the White House was not briefed on the raid, there is a part of me that thinks that is more plausible than you might think. Because look at the track record of the DOJ. George Floyd riots, free to go. Roe vs. Wade leak, mystery. The border, unenforced. Hunter Biden's laptop, silenced. Protesters outside of the homes of the Supreme Court justices, not a word. Clinton's classified emails, dismissed. Not exactly even-handed now, is it? Although the deep state does not have any political allegiance as far as I can tell, they will penetrate the apparatus by any means necessary. So when it comes to doing something truly horrible, it has to be done incrementally, because doing it with a great leap forward, eh, people might take notice and you run the risk of destroying the very rail you're riding on. Although if we look at the coup, it unfortunately showed a lot of evil people just how subservient humanity really is, and it is much much higher than I would have believed. And this is something that occurred to me a while ago that I've not heard anyone else talk about, which is the compounding psychological effect of the incrementalism. And what I mean by this is, depending on how long you've been doing it for and how conditioned the people are to it, this affords you the potential ability to make each incremental step you implement to be greater in scope than the previous ones without riling the eye of those you push it on. I think you can currently see the step may have been a bit of a gamble. I get the impression Trump was perhaps not supposed to win, although I've heard counter-arguments that the deep state let him win in order to sow the seeds of the chaos and hence be able to push all of this draconian policy, which is definitely a viable explanation, keep that one in mind. But I think with Trump's unexpected win, he plugged this incrementalism, at least temporarily, maybe even reversed some of it. Essentially a version of the Roaring Twenties again. He gave a vision of what at least competent government can look like. The media, however, spent his entire presidency gaslighting the world into smithereens and essentially IV'd the entire populace with a cocktail of lies and methamphetamines and drove the partisan divide into skyrocketing high rates. And one consequence of this has been the complete destruction of trust in virtually every institution in the United States. Well done. Now, whatever nefarious force managed to wrangle Biden's lifeless carcass into the office has from the very get-go set out to utterly destroy the United States from the inside in what appears from the outside to be a controlled demolition of the system, at least economically anyway. Other parts has been weaponized to go after political dissidents. Those 87,000 IRS stormtroopers are not there to target the rich, if that wasn't already blindingly obvious by now. But because they lost four years with Trump in office, and because it is a total 180 of the Trump administration, the incrementalism, by all account, looks greatly accelerated, and contrary to before, all too noticeable. And thanks to the old Ivy diet of destructive lies and mess, it's put the entire population on edge. And now it looks like every little thing they push could be that push that drives you off a cliff and past the point of no return. Whether it's this, I have no idea, but it must come at some point. If you keep marching towards destination doom, you will eventually reach destination doom. But no one knows what that point will be. And by the time they do, it will probably be too late and be a few steps ago. Just like the controlled demolition of each floor's windows being blown out, at what point is the damage too much and you just need to blow it all to hell and gone and start anew? Because it looks like to me to be either the last gasp of a desperate regime who are 
doing as much as they can get away with before they know they're all done, or they were always going to do something like this as some greater plot point. And so now you have two choices if you wish to avoid the precipice. You can either go national divorce and avoid unnecessary violence, or try to do something a little more flavorful and drastic. Which leads us to Trump. Short of Trump getting killed, and I wouldn't put it past these people, he is going to run again and he is going to win. And the Democrats don't appear that stupid to think they have anyone else that is actually going to beat him. Otherwise, they'd rest easy on a candidate they know can win. If they had a candidate that could actually win, they would put all of their chips and resources into ensuring that one is nominated and can win. And notice, they have no one. I mean, you could also make the argument that I made before that America's democratic element is a complete farce. It doesn't actually exist. The oligarchy is what truly reigns in the US if the DNC is essentially picking the candidate that they think can win. Like I said, in practice, you have the appearance of two corrupt royal families. Now, what exactly stops them from pulling the shenanigans of 2020 again? I think it is their complete and utter lack of any credibility to pull that off. Not to mention the Republicans have been grinding them away at the local level. Again, I said this before, when things are going well, you can get away with a lot because people are distracted by good times. It's very difficult to convince people the current regime is doing well when, by all objective measures, it indicates we're all in hell and everything's on fire. Especially when you're the one that caused said fire, and the guy you're up against can BTFO you all damn day long in comparison. And there is no way in hell you can pull that off without the corruption being so obvious that you suspect even the plebs might call you on your bullshit. So here's what I now think needs to happen, and this is where I depart and veer wildly away from the norm, and it's following on something that Mulbuck said, is if you look at the Aristotle three forms of government, monarchy, oligarchy, and democracy, two of the three can usually defeat the third, and what America has is a rapacious oligarchy. Ergo, you must elect what you could call a constitutionally orientated monarchy. Now, I'm not saying this because I'm a monarchist, I'm saying this as a practical arch-right-wing realist. If you look at the current structure, what has brought you to this ailing hell is public education, money in the democratic procedure, and the immorality in the sphere of public government. And so, switch to private. The penetrating influence has come from outside the nation's borders, as well as in, through democracy and voting. So if you keep it this regime without a drastic overhaul of all of those toxic influences that has allowed this corruption to fester and grow to this point, you're leaving yourself vulnerable for it to keep growing. And the right does not have the time nor the resources for such an overhaul of all of those institutions, or maybe a tank to drive through the universities, unless it has a colossal majority of historic proportion, can keep everyone in the party in line and keep it for several decades, coupled with a pair of brass balls the size of which could capsize the Titanic, and they don't possess any of those. And so your best solution? Get Trump in, seal off the gap through which these nefarious toxic influences permeate the government, i.e. the democratic apparatus, and work on what you could call a constitutional air. Not out in the open immediately, but behind the scenes. I mean, this isn't any different than what the oligarchy does now with the funding. The DNC openly talk about who they will run for 2024. Who is this they exactly? We never know. The democratic apparatus is the home of the rapacious oligarchy, the penetrating core that corrupts and rots the system from the inside. Their candidates are flooded with cash and favor before they even appear on the ballot. The corruption is complete before you even cast it. What do you think this is a threat to our democracy means? It's all an illusion, name only. And for the people that think, oh, this is terribly tyrannical, I don't care. Look at who your opponents are. Stop thinking of power as inherently evil. It's neutral. It's worthy of being both defense and attack. This is something the right does that I do not understand, is that they fail to realize over and over again that those who oppose them have absolutely no intention of playing by the same set of rules. They have no morals. They have no principles, no consistencies. They just want raw power and they don't care about how they get it. Get this through your fucking heads. You either fight fire with fire or you lose. 
You don't have any other options. Allowing the stupid plebs to vote dupes them into this facade of exercising power, and so the indoctrinated masses can inflict horrible damage on the rest of the population, and I consider this immoral. No one should have to suffer the wrath of the elite enabled by the whims of the gullibly stupid. This is the great flaw of democracy, tyranny of the masses via the opinion of the many a moron. Trump needs to go in and utterly destroy the place, because we all know the Republicans as a whole are absolutely feckless, weak, and far too fucking spineless to exercise any true means of raw power. You know, for all of their tough talk on faith, they don't give the impression they actually have enough of it to avoid attempting a law of power. Now, this may be an obscure reference, but look at this. Hello? Are there any girls in this room at all? Yeah, bring on the hot chicks, because I'm a hot stud. Yeah! So are we! I'm a woman, if that's what you mean. But you don't like, I, don't like I don't like to play games. So I'll just say I'm a cyclops, I'm a spaceship captain, I'm the only one of my species, and I'm interested in meeting a man. A woman? I'm scared. This is the Republican Party to a T. Because they will make all of these grand statements of, oh, when we get in power, we will investigate and hold people to crap. Those feckless cowards won't do a fucking damn thing. Because they're petrified of what some totalitarian shitheaded leftists might think of them. Trump, who is not a politician and doesn't give a flying fuck what his political rivals think, I trust to wreck shit. And so you must deduce that the current force is morally unfit to wield power in any capacity. They have shown their hands and they're evil so you can feel good about alienating them and their ilk away from the apparatus of power. And for those of you yanked shrieking at this idea, if what you had before was still working, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And if you think, well, this kind of government can't work, may I remind you, your own constitution was written and implemented in a reactionary coup. I will play up to your own national ethos and say the idea that something is impossible is ridiculous and profoundly un-American. And frankly, so is the current nefarious force opposing the Republican Party. I would suggest you rethink and reflect on the ideological foundation of your nation, Americans, and what the founders truly intended, a nation of the liberated. If the current republic is proving itself to be no longer fit for that particular endeavor, perhaps it is time to think on a more tried and tested style of government that is well known for keeping the power in its hands, one that will secure your ideological reign for a prosperous, foreseeable future. And that is all for today. I will see you all next time.